16, 1945, near the end of World War II, the first nuclear device was detonated at the Trinity Facility in New Mexico. A blast with the force of 20 kilotons of TNT turned the nearby desert sand into glass. Later, going to it at night, humanity had finally harnessed the power of the atom, and thus began the, a new era of fear. On the 6th and 9th of the same year, the power would be used for mass destruction. On these fateful days, the United States brought the little boy and fat man on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in an effort to push Japan to surrender, killing approximately 120,000 people on impact and causing an incredible amount of damage. Not long after, Emperor Hirohito of Japan, <coughs> crippled by the unholy amounts of death and destruction brought by these two bombs, announced the surrender of Japan. The danger, as it turned out, would not end there. An invisible energy, a silent killer, lingered in the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing tens of thousands of people. There was the exposure to the radiation from the detonation of Uruguay and Batman that continued to kill long after the surrender of Japan. The Cold War that took place uh, after this man, after this, manifested in a fear that at any moment the enemy would drop a nuclear bomb of the equivalent or greater power to those dropped in Japan. Will this energy destroy us? It would not take long for Hiroshima and Nagasaki to become habitable again. The background radiation levels today are similar to those found anywhere else in the world. This was not the end of the disastrous work and results of man's efforts to use the atom power. Nuclear energy facilities were created in various places around the world in uh, an efficient means of powering whole communities. This efficiency did not come without danger. In 1986, an explosion in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant resulted in, 1, 000, in a 1,000 square mile explosion zone. The immediate <coughs> death toll was only 31, but potentially many more deaths came about from the radiation. The massive steel structure known as the new steel confinement now surrounds the local nuclear power plant. The most dangerously reactive parts of the, uh, of, of the nuclear power plant are like, likely to remain uh, radioactive for many millennia. Radioactive waste does not really come about from these ones in the human accidents, however. Thousands of tons of radioactive waste are produced every year. This material is unceremoniously buried in the earth, where it can remain radioactive for tens of thousands of years. It's simple enough to keep people today from approaching or handling with these sites. Science and the general knowledge that radiation is dangerous is enough to deter the average person. But the lifespan of decaying radioactive matter is unfathomable. The culture shifts in a fraction of that time. Languages change rapidly, and even today, next one a few thousand years ago required years of training and a degree to make them understand. A warning sign for in classical Latin probably isn't going to dissuade your average person today. And while the Roman Empire declined gradually, other civilizations can fall rapidly, including our own. We have no way of knowing what languages will be spoken or what civilization will be like in 1,000 or 10,000 years, if they exist at all. Well, how do we communicate to our descendants as far into the future? This is a question many scholars have scratched their heads at for many years, and a question that both the new field of research, nuclear semiotics, communication along nuclear time. Several conventions have been held, and several ideas have been put to try and solve this, so solve this question. In 1981, Lewis Thomas Seabock developed the concept of an atomic priesthood inspired by the Roman Catholic Church. The class, the cultures are artificially developed to create an oral tradition of myths designed to instill fear and with nuclear resistance. The hope is that the priesthood will make the exploration and hampering of radioactive waste repositories into the But this suggestion comes with the implicit risks of the existence of an elite priesthood class. Psychotherapist Susan Garbo points out that this solution relies on the scene and the manipulation. Where should we run this basic class from becoming greedy with the power that would be handed in this silver platter? Another popular idea comes from some of the editions from Swap the Seed and Paul of Their idea is based on a companion we've had for many millennia. Cats. They are creating a beautiful source of animal research ways to take some editions of just genetically modifying cats to change color when exposed to radiation. <laughs> Uh, stories of songs describing how gray cats change fur color uh, in our near dangerous places could do the same job in how the of them. Physicist Emil Kowalski came up with a more pragmatic solution. Set up, set up the waste sites so that any person who can access it would also have to have the technology and knowledge to measure and understand the danger behind high amounts of radiation. None of these ideas have been applied, but the issue becomes more concrete as our nuclear waste patches grow larger and we need somewhere to store the waste. 
In a salt deposit not far from the Trinity test site lies the only deep geological repository in the U.S. and the third in the world, the Waste Isolation Power Plant, or the WIPP. The repository is to be filled with millions of square cubic feet of radioactive waste until 2070, and comes with the risk of adventurous souls putting themselves in danger thousands of years from now, such as human nature. A team of nuclear scientists and others of different talents came together to design a physical warning message with the philosophy Beauty is conserved, ugliness discarded. They were challenged to design a warning that would not be destroyed, vandalized, or tampered with. It must be durable, visible, understandable, and truthful. This design must communicate certain ideas non linguistically. The team describes their message in their report. This place is a message and a system of messages. Pay attention to it. Sending this message was important to us. We considered ourselves to be a powerful culture. This place is not a place of honor. No highly esteemed deed is commemorated here. Nothing valued is here. What is here is dangerous and repulsive to us. This message is a warning about danger. The danger is in a particular location. It increases towards the center. The center of danger is here, of a particular size and shape, and below us. The danger is so present in your time as it was in ours. The danger is to the body, and it can kill. The form of danger is an emanation of energy. The danger is unleashed only if you substantially disturb this place physically. This place is best left shunned and left uninhabited. The team's goal was to communicate this through unpleasant structures and pictograms depicting horror and sickness. The general design would include repulsive, unnatural berms surrounding the central area. These berms would set the tone for the rest of the site and guide the person investigating to a message kiosk containing several texts. The texts explain the site and the dangers that lie in it, and request that the reader update the markers and text with the language spoken in their time. The team went through many design concepts. The spike field. <laughs> Spikes bursting through the grid. Landscape of thorns. Menacing earthworks. And forbidding blocks. The spikes represent danger rising from the ground. The earthworks are irregular, nauseating, chaotic. The blocks become intolerably hot, uncomfortable, unusable. Ultimately, the WIPP's nuclear waste warning will consist of obelisks surrounding the inner and outer perimeter of a large wall. The obelisks will have warnings etched in, written in the UN official languages in Navajo, with spaces for future translations, an impermanent and frankly optimistic solution, but a solution nonetheless. Take this information as you will. Is this a testament to the longevity of the consequences of humanity's most regrettable follies, or to our compassion as we pour millions of dollars and thousands of hours into projects for the safety of people we could never know? That's up to you to decide. What we can say for sure is that the timeline of our waste dwarfs our own, and the negative consequences of our actions will long outlive us.